Let's adjust this from 2x to 3x. Just right. Welcome back to the Reflector channel, and boy, do I have a doozy for you today. This is a variable power Barlow. Now, if you've never heard of a variable power Barlow, well, join the club, because neither did I. I recently bought a set of used eyepieces, and it came with this Orion variable Barlow. This Barlow provides between 2x and 3x magnification. However, you can set it to any value in between. It's kind of analog that way. Now, as far as I can tell, Orion and Mead were the only two companies that made these in this format. You can tell Orion's because it has these slots cut in both sides. Barlows of any size are really cool. They are not eyepieces, but they will double the magnification of any eyepiece that you put in it. Barlows don't actually affect the eyepiece itself. Instead, they use a bit of optical trickery to make your eyepiece perceive that the telescope is twice as long as it physically is, roughly speaking. Effectively doubling the focal length of the telescope itself. That assumes you have a 2x Barlow. Likewise, if you had a 3x Barlow, it makes the eyepiece perceive that the focal length is actually three times as long. Why this works mathematically is dirt simple because of the formula we use for magnification. And that is that magnification is equal to the telescope's focal length divided by the eyepiece focal length. It's really that simple. If we double or triple the top number of that fraction, it will double or triple the magnification. And that is how a Barlow works. Most Barlows offer a fixed magnification, the most common being 2x and 3x. This Barlow offers you 2x and 3x and of course anything in between. But the craziest thing about this Barlow is how you change it from 2x to 3x. Here are the official instructions, and according to Orion, the simplest way to change the magnification of the Barlow is to tap one end against the palm of your hand and slide the cell to the desired position. Or you can just bang it on the table. The little set screws travel along the slot and they prevent the lens cell from falling out either end. Or you can do what Orion says and just bang it against your hand. Oh, but let's look at the back of the instructions. That's right, folks. Push the like button if you're liking this video. Seriously, please boop that like button. Now you really have to feel for the rooms of engineers at Orion that are building these things. They needed a way for that Barlow lens cell to slide up and down without falling out either end of the tube. And they couldn't have anything protrude from the outside edges that would go out beyond the sacred inch and a quarter diameter. Otherwise it wouldn't fit inside the focuser tube. Their solution was to cut these slots in the side and have tiny little flathead screws that would act as stoppers to prevent the lens cell from falling out of either end. Let's use this on Jupiter. There's a really low power 32 millimeter eyepiece and this is the 10 inch Dobsonian telescope that I have been restoring. The telescope has a focal length of 1200 millimeters. So the formula says that 1200 divided by 32 will give you about 38. So this has a magnification power of about 38. And there's Jupiter up there. Let's put this in the telescope and see what we see. And there we go. It's a very bright ball with some moons floating around it. Now let's bring the Barlow into the situation. I've got it set for 2x magnification. I'll take the eyepiece out, I'll put it in the Barlow, put it back in the telescope, and see what we can see. This has a magnification of about 75. Visually, it's pretty sharp. I can see a couple of the storm bands on Jupiter. Now let's move the Barlow to the other end to 3x magnification. I don't have a table to hit it on, so I'm just gonna hit it on our new Honda. Just kidding, I'm gonna use my hand, just like the instructions say. The IP's back in. This will give us a magnification of about 114. Uh -oh. So I've got the focus tube all the way out at full extension, and that's not enough to get a sharp focus on the planet. 
so I'm actually going to have to pull the whole thing out of the focuser tube a little bit. So it's a good thing it's long so that I can still have something to clamp onto. So I'm just going to pull this out until we get focus. There we go. Fortunately, the Barlow is so incredibly long that I could pull it out a couple of inches to achieve focus. It looks great, but it looks a little bit weird being pulled out. Orion doesn't make these variable Barlows anymore. It could be due to the rise in high quality zoom eyepieces that are available, or in the case of Orion, it could be due to these slots right here. You see, you can cover this with lens caps on each end to prevent dust from getting inside. But in the case of this Barlow, there's still these two giant slots on both sides that are gonna let dust get in. Now, in my case, I've just been storing it with lens paper wrapped around the barrel. One of the most interesting uses I found for this Barlow during my research for this video came from the forums on the Cloudy Nights website, where a user actually removed the entire Barlow cell, he just pulled it out, and he used this hollow tube as a focuser tube extension device to mount various camera equipment he had that needed wildly variable focal lengths. Now, I'm going to go ahead and bet that that's probably not what Peter Barlow thought that his invention would be used for way back when he invented it in 1833. Now, if you're interested in where the Crayford Focuser got its name, and no, it's not named after a Mr. Crayford, well, I've made a little documentary video for it that you can watch right there. And if you're looking for a cheap set of really good eyepieces that you can put in whatever Barlow you have, well, check out this video down here that's a review of the SV Boney Gold Line set of eyepieces. And as always, thank you for watching and clear skies.